for need preparation subscribe professor srivastav's biology lectures so that you can get regular updates okay right so now today we are going to start our discussion with your first chapter of ncert syllabus and that chapter is considered to be living world now basically when you talk about the living world all of you know that the living world comprises amazing diversity that does mean when you look out to the horses which are running when you look out to the flowers which are present in valley this comprises the amazing diversity of living world now the question arises what indeed the life means which is the force that particular force allow this life to go uh, according to biological science there are three concepts which will allow the indeed of life the first one is considered to be ecological conflict the changes which are taking place in ecology or environment second one is considered to be cooperation among the members of the population so whatever the population is present these members will cooperate with each other even you can consider that ki many populations will also cooperate to each other so ecological conflict cooperation among the members of the population or among the populations of a community that will really um, indeed the particular life the another point which biologists keep on thinking one is what is life and second one what means the living is now if i supposed to really ask you what is meant by living now when you talk about the living living is considered to be a self replicating self replicating self regulating self replicating yes please self regulating evolving evolving interactive system evolving interactive system now this particular system when you talk about it is capable of responding capable of responding to external or internal stimuli so when you came across the definition of living living is considered to be self replicating living is self replicate living is self regulating and evolving goes from simple to complex and all living organism will interact with each other that is when living living system is interactive and responding to the external stimuli responding to the external stimuli that does mean that if you find a cockroach is there how will you justify whether the cockroach is living or non living by you can say touching that cockroach if the cockroach will start running he is living but if cockroach does not show movement he is considered to be dead so you can consider that ki every living organism will respond to the stimuli now basically when you talk about this particular living concept uh, if someone asks you what are the properties of the living now let us enlist the properties of living organism the first property of living organism is considered to be growth second property of living organism is considered to be reproduction second property is considered to be reproduction of course we are going into the details of each property later the third property of living organism is considered to be metabolism the next property is considered to be ability to sense and respond am i right now when basically when you talk about this ability that is sense and respond that is nothing but called as consciousness that is called yes please consciousness so first property is growth reproduction metabolism sense and respond next property is considered to be ability to self organize all of you know that the cells will organize to form tissue tissue will organize to form you can say that organs so ability to self organize then there will came ability to self replicate self replicate apart from this there will came the ability that is considered to be most important ability that is ability to interact living organism interact with each other am i right and the last property you should remember according to your syllabus that is considered to be ability to emerge that is emergence so what are the properties of the living organism first property is growth second property is reproduction third one is metabolism fourth one is ability to sense and respond then there will be ability to self organize then there will be ability to self replicate 
then there will be ability to interact and emergence. Now let us go into the details of one by one property. Now basically when you talk about this first property that is considered to be growth. Okay. Now let us come to the first property that is considered to be growth. Now living organism when you talk about the first property of the living organism is considered to be growth. Now I will mention some points here which you have to remember regarding with growth. Now when we consider the organism is growing, growth is considered to be increase in mass, increase in mass, if the mass increases or growth is also considered to be increase in number. Now basically when you talk about the increase in mass and increase in number, these are the two same properties of the growth and that's why increase in mass and increase in number are considered to be twin properties of growth, twin properties of growth. Now let us understand growth in different aspect. If you look out to the every living organism, the every living organism will perform their growth by process of which division? Cell division. Am I right? Now let us classify the organism on the basis of their growth phenomena. If you really look out to the plants, am I right? So all of you know that the plants are having meristematic tissues which show primary growth, secondary growth. So plants when you are supposed to consider in plants the growth phenomena whatever is present that growth phenomena is considered to be indefinite. That does mean that the plants whatever is present they will show continuous growth throughout their life. When you came across animals, am I right? Now animals when you are supposed to consider they will grow up to certain size, am I right? So animals when you are supposed to consider they will show growth up to certain stage of life, up to certain stage of life. So animals when you are supposed to consider they will show growth up to certain stage of life. The another phenomena you have to remember regarding with animals, ki if you ask me ki whether the plants, okay, plants will be growing continuously throughout their lifespan. But when you came across the animals, the animal shows growth up to certain stage of life. Later on, animals does not undergo cell division. Yes, of course, animal undergo cell division to replace their lost cell. To replace lost cell. So if their injury takes place to the any animal, then there will be cell division takes place. But of course, the growth of animal is up to certain stage of life. And of course, when you take, came across some unicellular organisms, am I right? Now these unicellular organisms also show growth by process of which division? Cell division. So when you talk about a one bacteria and if it is growing into the petri dish, the many more bacteria will you can say that become MRI. So if you observe this growth, this growth we can observe in vitro under viscope microscope. So unicellular growth or unicellular organism ki growth can be observed in vitro in laboratory condition under microscope. Another uh, phenomena regarding with growth, you have to remember that when you talk about the growth, growth is not considered to be a defining property of living organism. Growth is not a huh, defining. Now, why growth is not considered to be defining property? This is because the growth is shown by non-living objects. Am I right? If you consider increase in mass as a criteria, and growth is also considered to be shown by living. So growth is phenomena which is shown by non-living as well as living. But when you came across the non-living object, the growth takes place from outside. The growth takes place just due to the accumulation of material on the surface and that phenomena is commonly called accretion. But when you came across the living organism, in living organism growth is from inside due to phenomena of cell division. And that's why when you are supposed to consider growth is shown by non-living as well as living and growth is therefore not considered to be defining property. So what do you remember regarding with growth? First one, the increase in mass and increase in number are twin properties of growth. Second one, multicellular or organism commonly shows growth by cell division. In plants, the growth is indefinite that is continuous throughout their lifespan. In animals, the growth takes place up to certain stage of life and later on they will show the great growth to replace their lost cells. Unicellular organisms also grow by cell division and this growth can be observed in vitro uh, under microscope. Growth is not a defining property. This is because the in non-living organisms, the growth is from outside due to accumulation of material on the surface which is called accretion 
and in living organism growth is from inside now the another feature of the living organism whatever is skin that is the second property and the second property is of living organism is considered to be reproduction now from neat point of view you have to remember some points regarding with reproduction which are i am mentioning here now the second property we you supposed to consider that is considered to be property of yes please reproduction now if someone asks you what is reproduction you can remember that the reproduction is considered to be a parents whatever is present let us suppose this is parent am i right now this particular parents will gives rise to a progeny am i right now when the parents will gives rise to progeny this particular reproduction is considered to be sexual reproduction but one point you should consider that ki parents and progeny are not exactly similar they are somewhat similar now exactly similar progeny is given by asexual reproduction am i right now when you talk about the asexual reproduction some of the example you should remember when you talk about the fungi the fungi whatever is present they will reproduce by asexual spore am i right now second one when you talk about something the lower organism belonging to you can say that ciliates that is considered to be hydra am i right second one when you suppose to consider yeast now when you talk about the hydra and yeast they will reproduce by budding they will grow show outgrowth that is bud and which will separate from uh, parental progeny or parental and gives rise to new generation so that is hydra and yeast by budding when you came across planariaans all of you know that ki planariaans ki body splits into many parts and each part gives rise to new organism that particular process is called regeneration regeneration and the last example you should remember regarding with three listen carefully the first one is considered to be filamentous algae okay second one you should remember about fungi and the third one you should remember about the stage of bryophytes which is considered to be protonema stage protonema stage of mosses which are higher bryophytes okay so protonema of moss filamentous algae and fungi they will multiply by fragmentation they will multiply by fragmentation okay so these uh, uh, particular examples you should uh, completely remember in your mind the first one fungi reproduce by asexual pores yeast and hydra by budding planariaans multiply by regeneration filamentous algae fungi and protonema of mosses multiply by fragmentation now when you look out to this phenomena that is something considered to be reproduction now when you classify the reproduction in two category first one when you look out to the reproduction that is taking place in lower organisms and when you look out to the reproduction that is taking place in higher organisms so if i suppose to consider lower organism let us take a example let us suppose this is a bacteria and this bacteria is divided into two what do you say if the bacteria is divided into two whether that bacteria undergone growth or whether that bacteria undergo reproduction so i can conclude that if bacteria is multiplying that is its reproduction but bacteria is increasing in number that is its growth that does mean for lower organism the growth and reproduction whatever is present that growth and reproduction for lower organism is synonymous it is considered to be synonymous that does mean that for lower organism the growth and reproduction whatever is present this growth and reproduction are mutually same event that does mean that they are mutually inclusive events for lower organism but when you go to the higher organisms am i right so if i suppose to consider that when i born i was very small am i right and I, now i am become a, a, you can say that a bigger one am i right so when you talk about when i was small and now i am become a bigger that is my growth but when my daughter born that is considered to be my reproduction so you can say that for higher organism the growth is different am i right and the reproduction is also different so for higher organism growth and reproduction is different that does mean for higher organism growth and reproduction is not synonymous and that's why you can consider for higher organisms growth and reproduction whatever is present that is mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive events now 
When you talk about the reproduction, let me ask a very common question: whether the reproduction is defining or not defining. So the answer goes: the reproduction is also considered to be not a defining property of living organism. I know every living organism undergo reproduction. I know any non-living organism never undergoes reproduction. But to this phenomena, there are certain exceptions like this. First one, you can consider a mule, which is uh, you can say that developed. by crossing horse and donkey another example you should remember regarding with worker bees now mules when you consider the worker honey bees when you supposed to consider worker honey bees huh? and third one when you talk about many sterile human couples who does not gives rise to the baby and a right sterile human couples now when you look out to these three examples mules worker bees and sterile human couples these are considered to be living but they does not perform which production reproduction so there are certain exceptions or there are certain organisms which are living but never perform reproduction and that's why reproduction is not considered to be which property defining property so let us revise reproduction the reproduction is process by which the parents gives rise to the progeny which are more or less similar to themselves that is sexual reproduction organism also reproduce by asexual reproduction like fungi reproduce by asexual spores is can hydra by budding planarians by regeneration filamentous algae fungi and protozoa of mosses by fragmentation when you came across the reproduction in lower organism the growth and reproduction is synonymous that is mutually inclusive events higher organism growth and reproduction is not synonymous it is mutually exclusive event reproduction is not considered to be defining property because there are many organisms which never reproduce like mules worker bees and sterile human couples now the another properties which will belong to the living organism and that property is considered to be metabolism now basically when you talk about the human body or any living organism ki body it is made up of multiples of chemicals and these chemicals will constantly interact with each other so when you came across the word that is something called as metabolism you have to remember two Two three point regarding with this property that metabolism when you talk about the metabolism is considered to be sum total of sum total of all the reactions sum total of all the reactions which are taking place in living organism is called metabolism. Metabolism when you are supposed to consider metabolism is considered to be a defining property of living organism. Now metabolic reactions when you are supposed to consider please listen carefully. the metabolic reactions whatever is present these metabolic reaction can be performed in vitro inside the test tube but when we perform these metabolic reaction which are taking place in a living organism in vitro in a test tube these particular metabolic reaction are not considered to be living and are not considered to be non living but one point you should remember that ki the reactions which are perfect performed in a test tube that are surely considered to be which reactions living reactions okay these three points you should remember regarding with metabolism that the metabolism is sum total of all the reaction taking place in a body metabolism is surely defining property all the metabolic reactions which are taking place in vitro are considered to be you know performed in a test tube are neither living nor non living and the metabolic reactions which are performed in a test tube are surely considered to be living reactions another property of living organism whatever is came that is considered to be cellular organization cellular organization of course when you talk about the cellular organization all the living organisms are made up of cells and that's why when you talk about the cellular organization this property is also considered to be defining property of living organism now we will came to the most complex property of living organism and most complex property of living organism is their ability to sense and ability to respond all of you know that if from the bacteria up to us means from prokaryotes to most complex eukaryote they are having ability to sense and respond and this property whatever is present that is called consciousness what is this property is called yes consciousness and surely when you talk about every living organism will show consciousness and no non living organism is conscious so this particular property is also considered to be defining property 
The one point you should remember hashtag by here that when you talk about the humans, the humans are considered to be only organism which are having self consciousness. Self consciousness. Am I right? So when you talk about the living organism, the living organism is having self consciousness. That does mean the living organism is aware of himself. He knows that he what happening with him and he is aware of himself. So humans is only creature on this universe who is having self consciousness. But when you came across the consciousness property to the humans, it will become critical to define it because when you talk about the coma patient. Uh, the patient who is in a coma and lying in a hospital, virtually supported by all machines, the coma patient, whatever is present, he is not considered to be living, and coma patient is not considered to be non-living. You should remember this point. The coma patient is neither living nor non-living. And another point you should remember that when you talk about this coma patient, the coma patient has no self-consciousness, has no self. Consciousness. Okay, so let us revise this point. Sum total of all reactions, metabolism, defining property, metabolic reactions which are performed in a test tube are neither living nor non-living, but living reactions. Cellular organization is another defining property. The ability to sense and respond that is called consciousness, which is a defining property because every living organism is able to sense and respond. Humans are only organisms. Which are self-consciousness that is aware of himself. The coma patient neither living nor non-living, but surely this patient has no self-consciousness. Now, when you came across the another property of living organism, when you goes to the higher study, you will came to aware that ki all the living phenomena are due to the property that is called interactions. So, when someone asks you, "Why the living phenomena exist?" Your answer should be goes. Okay, all the living phenomena are due to underlying interactions. So, if we suppose to consider, let us take an example. All of you know that the tissues when you suppose to consider, the tissues are made up of cells. Am I right? Or you can consider that the tissues are made up of cellular constituents. Am I right? Cellular constituents. So, if someone asks you, okay, why tissue exist? The properties of tissue, whatever is present. It does not lies in the in the constituent or you can say that in, uh, in the properties of tissue whatever is present that does not lies in our cellular constituent. It lies within the cells ka interaction. Okay, what is the interaction that exists between this cellular constituent? So you can say that properties of tissue does not lies in cellular constituent. It lies in their interaction. Another let us take an example. If you talk about the cells, am I right? The cells are made up of you can say different cellular organelles, am I right? Like Golgi complex, or you can say that uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So there are different cellular organelles are present, and these cellular organelles, when you are supposed to consider, they are made up of different molecular components. They are made up of different molecular components. So if I ask you. If cellular organelles are made up of molecular com components, the properties of cellular organelle does not lies in molecular component ka constituents. Means what they are made up of, it lies in molecular components ki interaction. So you can remember that ki when you talk about the cellular organism, it does not matter ki what cellular organelle organelles are made up of. It belongs their interaction. So you should remember that. The properties of tissue does not lies in cellular constituent; it lies in their interaction. Properties of cells, when you are supposed to consider, it does not lies in their cellular constituents or you can say molecular constituent. Is like it lies among their interaction. So all the living phenomena which are exist that is due to underlying interactions. Okay. So which properties we had discussed yet? We had discussed about first one growth, second one reproduction. Now let us categorize these properties as. If you are supposed to consider living organism, some properties, whatever is present, they are considered to be not defining. Some properties are considered to be not defining, and of course, some property when you are supposed to consider, they are considered to be defining. So, when you talk about the not defining properties, the not defining properties are considered to be growth, am I right? And second one is considered to be which production? Yes, please, reproduction. And when you came across the defining property. The defining property is considered to be metabolism. 
The second defining property, whatever is came, that is considered to be cellular organization. Am I right? And the third property, whatever is came in defining category, that is considered to be you can say consciousness, consciousness. And the fourth property, whatever is came, that is considered to be interactions. Am I right? So these are considered to be defining properties of living organism. Now let us revise some uh, small small points. First one, when you came across the branch that is considered to be biology, the biology is considered to be a story of life on the earth. Story of life on the earth. When you talk about the biology, biology is also considered to be a story of evolution of life on the earth. When you talk about all the living organism, listen carefully, all the living organism. When you talk about the all living organism which are present past, which are now present means in present or you can say that the living organism which are going to came in evolution in future. All these living organism whatever is present they are related to each other. Now why I am talking this that all the living organism are related because all the living organism whatever is present they share common genetic material. Share common genetic material. So we are having common genetic material that's why we all are related with each other but one point you should remember that though we are considering we share all the we share common genetic material this particular common genetic material is up to varying degree means some difference is present in genetic material otherwise our genetic material is common and that's why all living organisms are related with each other. So these are considered to be your first topic that is considered to be properties of which material? Genetic material. So properties of genetic material or properties of you can say that living organisms when you supposed to consider the living organisms are having not defining property that is growth and reproduction and defining properties are considered to be metabolism, cellular organization, consciousness and interaction. In next video we are going to deal with second concept and that is diversity of living organism. Okay up to then thank you very much.